In today's news, we are edging ever closer to the final judgement in the Ripple vs SEC lawsuit. Ripple's victory seems assured, more or less confirmed in my opinion, and if I were to take just a second to remind you what happened the first time Judge Torres determined XRP is not a security, well, XRP exploded, soaring 30% and then some almost a 2x from 47 cents to almost a dollar. This Friday, will mark exactly one year since this verdict, the decision that changed everything, kickstarting the crypto revolution in the United States and the gradual downfall of the SEC. Speaking of which, their situation has only continued to worsen amongst every other defeat they have had now. Another senior aide to Gary Gensler has left the SEC to take a high power position in defense of crypto companies against Gensler and Senator Warren. This is huge huge news. As per Fox Business journalist Elena Terrett New, former SEC policy director Heather Slavkin Corzo is joining public policy firm Mindset and Mindset has a number of clients in the financial service industry including Crypto Focus, Paxos and Paradigm. This is big news. We have seen the dismissal of many SEC employees in the past three years, seemingly all due to bad policies and illicit rulemaking imposed by Gary Gendler, lawyers who have been let go because they lied in the courts of law, which is insane. They have lost lawyers, some of them which were directly involved in the Ripple case, all the way down to their policy directors. And every loss stacks up, strengthening the case in Ripple's favour and once their official final judgment is in when Ripple wins this three-year-long lawsuit XRP's adoption will explode in the United States and this will eventually translate to its price XRP to be worth thousands of dollars because another major defeat for the SEC that occurred recently effectively confirming that XRP has won came from the US Supreme Court when they decided to overturn Chevron doctrine listen closely to what the Good Morning Crypto and Mikkel states in this video we got huge news this week as the Supreme Court overturned the Chevron Doctrine, which has existed since 1984. What we're going to be doing is we're going to break this down and show you how this is all leading to the inevitable resolution of the Ripple lawsuit. This means that the SEC and other three-letter agencies can reference themselves in court cases. So specifically, when it comes to the Ripple test, the whole lawsuit is about the SEC's interpretation of the Howey test and how digital assets do not comply. We'll get great news for everybody, guys. So it's really a race to get your product out there. And when you have players like BlackRock in the race and you're a small player, the only advantage you have over someone like BlackRock is to be first into the ring. So what I think we're going to see is a lot of the smaller players start to issue ETFs to try to front run the BlackRock. So because of Ripple, because they have fought tooth and nail to prove the SEC is acting on bad faith, that they are being arbitrary and capricious, this has opened everybody's eyes. The US Supreme Court has removed the power of agencies like the SEC to make their own judgment. They have to now prove it in front of a jury and that's not gonna be easy for them. And those who are aware of how big a decision like this is, those who are aware of what this inevitably means for XRP are the ones who will make the most money. The small players will start to offer ETS for XRP before BlackRock inevitably will and they will make a lot of money. Ripple ran so the rest of the crypto industry could walk using their testimony to help their own legal proceedings. In fact, Coinbase now is seeking to access the SEC chair Gary Gensler's personal emails dating back to 2018. Maybe they are looking for signs of corruption, conspiracy, to uncover the truth behind the SEC regulation by enforcement agenda. But the reason this is big news is because these emails would also date back during his time at MIT. As we can hear in this video from the Mr. Man XRP, this conversation by Harvard legal team was just getting hotter and divulges that they had known about the Ripple vs. SEC case in 2019. That's a year prior to the actual case. What's even more interesting though is the fact this video ends abruptly while he is speaking. Listen closely. I think, um, kind of more specific, but I think in 2019 or within the probably next two years or so, there's going to be a case, going to be a test case of whether or not like the application of Howey to legitimate non-fraud um, token sales and token projects that are legitimate use cases that that's not in question and whether or not how these steps apply. And so far we've had a lot of guidance, a lot of statements, a lot of um, settlements against small projects that weren't really doing much. 
but noticeably there has not been any of the key projects that we talk about a lot and which everyone knows none of them have been at signed up to any of these regulatory regimes they're still in this gray area and one of the lawyers from Harvard in the previous video I just showed you spoke about a court case coming to test the Howey test and then this mock court case with Gabby Gendler came out. Potentially, this has been a setup since day one. This whole case has been a front to keep the price of XRP low to allow these institutions to quietly accumulate cheap XRP before they flip the switch and XRP's use case, adoption and price explodes. Because have you ever really thought about the implications or the significance of, for example, Robin Hood? Robinhood acquiring Bitstamp. They state it was a major step in growing their crypto business, but Ripple has a quiet stake in Bitstamp, and that's why Bitstamp also loves XRP. So potentially Robinhood did this because they want to get XRP as well. Ever thought about as well the significance of this Visa and HSBC collaboration? Visa has published their report on the collaboration with HSBC on their tokenized deposit with two use cases, real estate and Visa card payments. This is huge, huge news because both major payment companies are in partnership with Ripple. Therefore, they have been allowed to get access to Ripple this whole time and this lawsuit has kept the price of XRP low and investors scared due to the stagnant price of the market. But what you need to understand though, the most important thing you need to understand is how quickly this shift will occur, how quickly XRP could explode to be worth thousands of dollars. In this video here from Smoke, how long is the implementation process to get started with Ripple? Just three weeks. Three weeks is all it takes to get a bank's back end system integrated with Ripple once the regulations are passed. Take a listen. Which I think should be quite comfortable for you. How long is the implementation process to get started with Ripple? Yeah, so typically we look at about a two to three month uh, basis from start to finish. Um, a lot of that is part of the onboarding process. So we go through a credit review process. We then have an onboarding process that's relatively straightforward. In terms of the technical integration side, it can take between, I'd say probably one to two months. Um, that includes things like testing, um, integrating into the system, and just general process. Uh, I think the fastest one I've ever done was probably a three week um, implementation, which was very fast. Um, and probably the slower ones hit that sort of three month mark. But it's as, it's as fast as you can put resources into to making it happen. And we're, we're here to support that. The whole world, of course, will benefit from crypto regulations, but this will play a much more important role for XRP and for Ripple because Ripple's adoption is worldwide. As we can hear in this video from Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse, take a listen. Holding back crypto at large is tribalism. I, I mean, Ripple has invested in over 60 companies. We've invested hundreds of millions of dollars, close to $500 million, and about 60 different companies across the crypto landscape. Some of them are involved with XRP, some of them aren't. I truly believe all boats can rise, and I think the whole industry, frankly, needs to stop taking shots at each other and try to like support each other and try to actually help people be successful. The final judgment is closer than ever. Brad Garnier also stated in the past that he believes that this verdict will come before the end of the summer and this verdict is going to act as a major catalyst like it did before for XRP's price to explode. For the meantime though, we have some important dates to look out for yesterday with the deadline for the narrowed motion to seal and near the end of this month, 26th of July, is a deadline to file a notice related to the exclusion of expert testimony. Big, big things are coming. Potentially we'll see a verdict before the end of this month but at this point, the SEC's days are numbered and Ripple's victory is assured. So do your own research and remember, don't be look short term, think long term. And I'll see you in the next one.